I've got another item for your toy box that is a must. Especially if you're going to start doing add-ons and customizing your coloring pages or even doing your original artwork. This is an absolute must for anybody who is learning how to do perspective. This is called the rolling ruler and it is very inexpensive. We are not talking major dollars here. I saw one that was on Amazon. It was smaller than this one. It's a five inch one, but really if you can't afford $8, the one for, um, the one that's half the size is $2. So we're not talking any sort of major investment here. The rolling ruler is by far better than doing anything, any artwork or anything with a regular ruler and I'm going to show you exactly why and what this bad boy can do. All artwork stems from perspective and with that comes learning how to do angles and proper angles. The rolling ruler will handle that for you and I'm going to show you and do a do demonstration on what this can do. Now we've already talked about what a horizon line was and that's just the area where the sky meets uh, the earth. We've done a one point and a two point perspective, how to turn an object. Well, when I was teaching you that, I was at a disadvantage because it been, had been a long time since I've had a brand new one of these. Unfortunately, my old one had cracked. I've owned many of these over the years. They're inexpensive. They do break from time to time and you just get another one. They're, it's not that big of a deal. They're all the same. You can go on Amazon. They all look the same. They basically work the same. I looked for an upgrade if there was anything that came with more gadgets or none. This is the same ruler rolling. This is the same. This is the same rolling ruler identical to the one I bought 20 years ago, my first one. So they're all the same. They're clear plastic. The better ones are clear plastic and you're going to want clear plastic. What makes it different than the regular ruler? Here you have a regular ruler. Every time you move that ruler around, you have to lift it up or you're smearing your picture. So if I wanted to do angles going all the way, I either have to lift it up, I have to readjust to make sure that my line is in the exact same spot. When I'm going across, I have to make a dot at this end and a dot at that end, making sure they line up. And then I would say 20% of the time, it's incorrect. And my lines turn out like that. Well, not with the rolling ruler. Also, it's hard to lift it up off the page. You're always going to smear something. With the rolling ruler, you don't have this problem. First, you line it up. It's got the line here line it up with the edge of the page it's thick enough line it up with a line on the other side and you've got a straight line there's only one other piece of equipment that i have and that's a t-square a t-ruler and i do recommend that when you're doing using it you make your line now i want to make lines anywhere it just rolls I never have to worry about picking it up. Smoothly goes across my page. And I always have a straight line. This is going to come into play more because I'm going to teach you guys how to hand letter. For the other side of the page, what do you do? when you have a page and then a blank on the side. Put some hand lettering in there. Put a saying, a, a message to your loved ones, anything. That is a perfect add-on. This ruler is like almost a necessity. I have all these horizontal lines. Now, I don't even have to worry about squaring things off. And there we have it. 
Now, why is this so important? Well, you're about to see. We're going to start learning how to draw. And I know not everybody is going to be into drawing, but you can put up with the five-minute segment. This is one of the reasons that I divided my new format up into segments. There's something for everybody. And some of the things that people want to learn is how to do your own original drawing. So we have the rolling ruler. We're going to do a simple three-dimensional shape. This is the fundamentals of all drawing, coloring, you name it, is being able to create a picture that's three-dimensional. In order to get a three-dimensional picture, you must have your angles correct. So we're going to learn right from the beginning how to do the square, and now then we're going to pick the square apart. Now, this is a lot of fun, actually. So we have a square. Oh, if anybody bought the... Um, the F mat. I was wondering why they gave extra ones of these white ones. I did find that with my F mat, the metal sort of stretches out a little bit. And to fix it, all those little pieces that you get of your, if I put them on the bottom, I get a lot more use out of the eraser. It works perfectly. So that's just a little tip if you have the um, aft mat, and that's actually just not only for the aft mat, it's for any electric eraser, is to save those little bits and pieces to raise up this. So, so here we have a square. It's boring, it's flat, it's not doing anything. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler. Everything, every line that goes like this stays that way. Every line that is to the side is going to stay at the same angle, and that's what I love this for. So we're going to take this, and we're going to choose our angle. How far over is this going to go? Um, most of the time, it's like 15 degrees. I'm not measuring it. So here we have the line. I'm going to take this, roll it down, and draw another line. My two lines are exactly the same. Doing the back of the box, roll it back up, draw across. Very simple. This line is, is perpendicular. That line is perpendicular, and we're going to do this line, perpendicular. So now we're missing this line. How do I know which angle to do it at? Take this, just roll it down, grab the point of the corner, and roll up. Clean up your edges. you got a perfectly square box that's now three-dimensional. <laughs> but we're not finished. Now this box is solid. If I wanted to make it clear or see-through, take my perpendicular line, go over, go down, take this, roll it down to here, This angle goes straight to this point, and now my bo box is see-through. Now, people have been drawing these boxes forever. What if we want to take it and do some other things with it? This is where it gets fun. What happens if you want to cut this corner off? Very simple. I'm going to I'm going to make this solid so that we can we can build walls and stuff.
Okay, now we have a solid box. I want to cut this corner off. I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to line my lines up. Say I want to cut this off. There. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go down from this line. Line it up. Just roll it down. And I can erase on the bottom. Now we have a door. But what happens if we want to take this whole corner off? Get out my ruler. Everything on this side is going to go with the angle. And then I'm going to cut it off. Take my eraser and get rid of this. Now I have a box and I sliced into it. What else can I do? Well, I want to build a wall inside the box. Take my ruler, go down to the edge, follow the ruler, and now it's going in. If I want to stop it at this point, I could stop it right there, erase, now I have that corner cut off. Here I have a slightly lopsided T. It's supposed to be any building, anywhere, any shape, any letter, but we're just doing a T. I'm going to choose my angle. And we'll say we'll do it like that. That's as far back as I want to go. Now, every point on this side, I'm going to do at the same angle. And this is why you have a rolling ruler. Okay. So now you have everything that's going in that direction going in that direction. Everything coming down, okay, on the top, we're going to draw the top, and then every line going to the same side, we're going to do going down from the points. So it met at this point, it goes down at this point. Now, if you want to be perfect, you measure this. You measure this, and that's how long this line should be. But for time's sake, I didn't do it that way. But that's the way you'll do it so that it's perfect. Because we're just playing now. Now I want to take off. I want to take off that. Everything that's down. Everything that's going in that direction is at that angle and we can take this back back corner off I want to take off a line over here grab that go halfway or as far back as you want it line it up Now there's a hole going in it. Now I want to take off. I want to take off this corner. Go up. down same thing over here 
because it's on this side. You just have to make a mistake once or twice about which line to do, and then you get it. It becomes like automatic, and then down. Take your eraser and erase. I can turn this into anything I want by doing it this way. Now I want to take off the corners on the other side, and it gets a little bit, a little bit wonky, but not too bad. It's the same thing, but it's at the other side. I want to take this corner off. Go up. I want to take this corner off so you go up and across and then erase. And that corner comes off. Now what happens if I want to cut it out the other way? This is all looking down. What happens if I want to remove part of the top? Take my ruler, go down as deep as you want, follow your angles, and cut it off. Now I want to take that angle off, follow the angles from the side, never change your angles, got your ruler, it'll never screw it up, and take that off. But there's going to be something you're going to have to add in there. Now you can see it's missing something. Let's put in a floor over there. So what you're going to have to do is go down to this angle down here and get your wall joint or whatever joint is down there. Go down, find that. You're at the same angle as this. Everything is the same angles. And just draw it. Here, get your straight. Go straight. Now you want to put in that wall joint. Creating that wall. And I've just cut this entire angle off. I've probably failed architecture because that whole... Seems like this whole thing would fall off. But we're not building this thing. So here I have, the uh, say, a, a terrace on my little fictitious modern day house. Now, if you practice this with all your letters and get really good at this, I promise you, your your drawing is going to get better. Now, I don't want to take this too much further. I want you guys to, if you can practice your, um, just your buildings or your letters, do it one for the alphabet. By the time you are done, you will have this down. And then we're going to get interesting because we're going to start doing curved lines and that's where it gets a little bit more but not bad if you could do this you're going to be able to do everything you're going to be sketching anything you want anywhere you want by the end of this i promise <laughs>
Mina is definitely different than Puff. <laughs> when Puff was little, he used to sit there. He was curious about everything, but not afraid of anything. Mina, on the other hand, is a lot more aggressive than Puff, and it would not surprise me if later on she becomes more of the aggressor than he is. The first time I ever let Puff watch the fish, those are my babies, Puff just sat there in bewilderment. He looked at everything, and as you can see, Mina, on the other hand, wants to eat them. She wanted to sit there. She wouldn't leave them alone, and she wouldn't run off. She just looked at them like they were food, where Puff looked at them like in amazement. Uh, they're both shedding right now. Uh, Puff is pretty much done, and Mina is just starting a pretty hefty sh shed. She's all crunchy. <laughs> So when they're shedding, you kind of just leave them alone. Normally, their appetite goes down when they're about to shed, and they get a little bit more sleepy. Uh, you can just tell there's a little bit of a slowdown in their personalities, but not Mina. Mina has been feisty. In fact, she was so feisty, I put my hand into the cage the other day, and she actually went to bite me. I've never been bitten by a bearded dragon, so she's got some aggression in her. It, it might be that uh, she's just a little bit more intelligent. She's also probably expecting that every time I put my hand in the cage, I'm going to be giving her food. You might not be seeing Puff as often on camera because in the wintertime, they go through like a slowdown period and he's definitely starting his slowdown period. If I decided to cool him down a little bit, he would go into something called bromation, which is a type of hibernation, or pretty much a hibernation. And when they wake up in the spring or get more active in the spring, they get really hungry, and that's when they want to mate. So Puff is definitely going through it right now. I'll try to put him on camera as often as possible, but really I don't. During the bromation months or the slowdown months, I don't like to bother him too much. Besides the fact he's just going to sit there. Today I plan on switching over to a silver. And you see in all here... I'm going to get the darker areas and then the same darker areas down here. Before I move on to a darker shade of gray, this is a matching to this color. It pretty much is a silver. Mix that with a little bit of cool gray and that's what you have in here. Now, even though she was a predominantly white dog, you could still see the gray in here and going underneath. So that's how you create a white on white situation. You fill in the insides with the gray. So I'm going to be getting up in here, along here, in here, and on the sides. So I'm going to put you on hyperlapse for this because there's not much more I could teach you. I just got to get that color gradient in there. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. 
and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.